Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are doing a bit of a collab. So if you guys missed last Friday's video, I actually headed down to Menominee Falls and hung out for a few hours with Jen from Rustic Rehabs and we went thrifting. So I picked three items for her and she picked three items for me and we are flipping them in today's video. So the bonus is the items are a little bit similar so you can see how I flip them and then you can see how Jen flips them. So I am gonna have her information in the description below. So after you get done watching this video, head on over to hers. For project one, if you guys missed last week's Friday video, I went down to Menominee Falls and hung out with Jen from Rustic Rehabs. We decided we were going to do a collab and she had to pick a couple items for me and I was going to pick a couple items for her. This was one of the items that she picked. All right, Donna, here's your choices because I, I want you to be happy. This one, okay. pretty cute. I, You're right. I, oh. Yeah, that wasn't us. Because this is more me. Yeah. Okay. And did you put that other one back that you had that was like that? Yeah, I did actually. Oh, there you go, then that works. So. So I loved the basket, but I was not too set on the lemons. First thing, I took off the sticker, which I paid $2.99 for it, and, at, and then I wiped it down really well. Now, at first, I was going to leave this string on, and I was going to work around it, and then I decided it would be much easier to remove the string if I was going to apply some decoupage paper. And then after I removed the strings, then I decided I was going to fill the holes and I was not going to use the hanger at all. I was going to use it more as like a shelf sitter. I decided I was going to use a piece of decoupage paper to flip this. I am using Roy Cycle decoupage paper called Pressed Flower Masterboard, and this is from her last release. All the papers can be found on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Now, I love the masterboards because there are so many images on here, and you can use them on so many different projects. This one definitely caught my eye. I loved the botanicals on the bottom. And then I also loved that little sign. I'm like, I, I was thinking, what could I stamp on there? So what we're going to do is we are going to position this and kind of figure out how I want it on that little wood board. Uh, and I, I think that's exactly it. I want the sign to be a little offset. And I, I at first wanted the bird, but then it, the bird and the botanicals were not going to both fit. So the bird had to go. Anytime you're using Roy cycled paper or any type of decoupage paper for that fact, if you really want your paper to pop, you want to start with a white background. Also, if I would just lay the decoupage paper down, it would you would see the lemons through it. So I'm using DIY's beadboard, and I am going to apply one even coat of the beadboard on here, let it dry, and then we're going to come back and add the decoupage paper. Here I'm showing you, I used a little bit of the IOD air dry clay. I filled the holes in and then I just uh, sanded it back after it dried. Now I'm using liquid patina. This is my go-to decoupage medium when I use recycled paper. It absolutely is perfect. I am going to position my paper how I want it and then I am going to cut off any excess and then I start laying the paper down. If you've seen me apply decoupage paper before, you will know I always like to start with a starter strip. So I just apply a little bit of liquid patina, just a nice even layer. I then uh, push back the decoupage paper and then smooth it out and then I work my way down. And this is by far the easiest way to apply paper and alleviates as many wrinkles and you have much better control over your paper. 
After it dries, take a piece of sandpaper and typically in a downward motion is what I recommend. So away from the paper. Uh, here I am just rubbing side to side and it gives you a really nice crisp clean edge and the paper has to be completely dry though when you do this. After I applied the paper, I decided I wanted to add a bit of dimension to the basket. So I am using the conservatory mold or conservatory labels mold and I am using uh, the resin. If you haven't used the 10 minute resin, super easy. Uh, you just use 50% part A, 50% part B, stir it up and then as soon as it goes clear, Put it in your mold and it sets up with ten, within 10 minutes. Once it's white, it is completely set up and all you do is you just kind of twist the mold a bit and it pops right out. And I actually had picked three different molds and then I had a little bit extra and I just put it in the very bottom of one of the other molds. And you guys, that is the one I used. I kind of played around with the three that I actually had poured and I just thought they were too big. Uh, like this one I thought kind of looked cool, but I wanted something that fit inside of that frame of the um, label. So once I realized that other little tiny one that was kind of like the scrap or the leftover uh, resin fit, I'm like, I'm going with it. So I trimmed it down and I made it work. I had been using beadboard, so I just pulled out beadboard and I applied one even coat of beadboard to the entire mold. I let it dry and then we're gonna come back and we are gonna stamp on it. I wanna use the Apothecary labels. This is a new stamp set from the last IOD release. Unfortunately, I am currently sold out. As soon as IOD gets those back in stock, I will be reordering and getting those on my website. I love this set because it comes with four different little fonts, plus you get a whole bunch of different labels on here as well. So what I decided to um, put on here is I'm gonna stamp out grow. So I take all the little tiny letters I lay them out and then I take a piece of backing and I pick them up. I'm using the black ink uh, from IOD, which is permanent. I just ink up the word grow and then I centerize it and I lay it down. And the key is just make sure you have very lightly rub over all the letters to really ensure that you get a really nice clean image. After that, I used Big Top and I sealed the piece. Because the black ink is permanent, you don't need to seal that, but because I use DIY's beadboard, that does need to be sealed. So I am sealing it with Big Top. I'm going to let it dry. And then what I discovered was when I had laid it down, I just thought the beadboard was a little bit too bright for the colors of the basket and for just the paper itself. So I'm using a little bit of the dark wax from DIY and I am just rubbing it over the entire piece once it's dry after the big top dries. And then I'm gonna wipe back the excess wax and now I think it is the perfect color for this piece. For project two, you guys know I am a sucker for a good old rolling pin. So my contribution was I told Jen she had to flip a rolling pin and I was going to flip a rolling pin. And she's like, I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, you got to get a little creative. So I can't wait to see what she does with her rolling pin. Uh, hers was $1.99, mine was $2.99. So I took off the tag, I wiped it down really well, and let's go ahead and start flipping this piece. 
I grabbed the Pressed Flower Master Board again from Roy Cycled. I love, I, like I said earlier, I love Master Boards because there's so many images on here. And this one is going to be perfect. I loved how it had butterflies on here. It had some beautiful writing, uh, some florals. It was absolutely perfect for this rolling pin. So I really want to make sure that that yellow butterfly is on there, the butterfly below it, and the one to the left. And I want to get a lot of that font on there as well. So that's where I'm going to start positioning the paper with those images. I could have gone one of two ways. If I wanted the paper to pop, I could paint it white like I'm doing. Otherwise, if I wanted the paper to really kind of blend into that wood, I could have went in with it just the way it was. But I do really want this paper to pop. So I'm applying one even coat of beadboard to the entire rolling pin, and then we're going to apply the decoupage paper. I'm using liquid patina, which is my go-to for applying Roycycle decoupage paper. Uh, when you're dealing with something round like this, again, you'll want to start with a starter strip and you just want to work your way around. Now, the decoupage paper is going to be wet, so you don't want to be rolling it a lot. So you just kind of want to lift it up as you're applying it. So what I do is I initially figure out where I want to start and then that's where I use my starter strip and then I apply the decoupage paper onto to that starter strip and then like I said lift up my uh, rolling pin a bit and then I just start working my way all the way around now that the decoupage paper is dry it's time to get rid of that excess paper Anytime you apply the decoupage paper, you just want a little bit of an excess just in case, you know, you want a little wiggle room, guys. So I am taking a piece of sand sandpaper and in a downward motion, removing the excess paper. Next, I want to make the handles look like they've just been used for years and years. So I am taking a little black dress from DIY and I'm going to apply one even coat of the DIY paint to both handles. Once it dries, then we're going to wet distress it and I'm just going to use a baby wipe and I'm just going to wipe back a little bit here and there. Just make it look like somebody has used these handles over and over again. After that, I'm using Big Top to seal it. And really, guys, that is how easy it is to transform a rolling pin. For project three, Jen found these tall spindles and there was a bunch of them, you guys. And she said, well, do you want to try to do something with this? And I said, yeah, we should both do one. So we each grabbed a spindle and right when I saw it, I knew what I wanted to do with it. So at the retreat that I recently attended, I did a workshop and during the workshop, everyone ended up getting a birdhouse and they were able to decorate their birdhouse however they wanted because I was trying to explain like when I find something uh, while I'm out thrifting it is really a blank canvas and then I get to completely transform it any way I want so they all were able to do that with their birdhouses I did have a couple extra birdhouses so today we are going to use those birdhouses on the spindle so I'm going to cut the spindle in half and we are going to create two different pedestals for these birdhouses. The thing I'm going to do is paint the entire spindle beadboard from DIY paint and I'm just going to apply one even coat to it, let it dry, and then I'm going to take it outside and we are going to chop this baby in half. 
Here are the two pieces. I actually thought it was right in the center where I cut. Unfortunately, it wasn't, but I like it. I would rather have them staggered a bit. I have the two birdhouses and then I have, uh, I took a one by six board and I just cut six by six little pieces and I cut four of them. Uh, one for the base on the bottom and then another one to use under the birdhouse. For starters, I am going to use beadboard and I'm going to paint the birdhouse's beadboard. But for the roof, I decided to use the new IOD paint inlay. And I had a bit of this left over, so I'm gonna take uh, two different uh, pieces of the inlay and we're gonna make that the roof. I just think it'll look so springy or summery with the roof um, with this like floral. And uh, it's, I think it's just gonna set these birdhouses apart. If you haven't used a paint inlay yet, you do need two coats of paint. So for starters, what I'm going to do, apply one even coat of the beadboard to the entire piece, including the roof. Now that the first coat of paint is completely dry, it's time to apply that second coat of paint. I am using, again, DIY's beadboard, and when I attended the IOD conference and Jonathan Mark Mendez gave uh, instructions on how to perfect the paint inlay, he did recommend, there was a couple tips, uh, the second coat of paint, you should have just a little bit thicker than the first coat, and you should have a misting bottle and actually mist your paint inlay to activate it. And that is exactly, since I've started taking those couple tips, my paint inlays are so much better. So I'm applying just a nice even coat of the beadboard. I am then going in with my misting bottle. I am misting the entire paint inlay. Uh, here's another pro tip. Make sure that you are using the painted side down versus the gridded side. Uh, I did that once. And so the gridded side should be facing you. I always start on one side. I start smoothing it out and then I work my way down the other side. And this really helps you alleviate a lot of those wrinkles as well. Once you get the paint and lay down, I take my misting bottle again, I spray the entire piece of paper, and then I take another rag and I just uh, really embed that paint and lay in that wet paint. And then after this, you're going to let it dry, and then you're going to come back after it's dry to remove the paint and lay. While those are drying, I came up with an idea. I was going to use these labels on the front of the birdhouses. I decided to paint them petticoat pink from DIY. I thought it would really bring out like the pinks in all the florals on the roofs. I'm letting those dry and now we're coming back and we're gonna remove the paint inlay. So I am taking my misting bottle again. I am spraying the entire paint inlay and then dabbing off any of the excess water with a, a rag. And then I start on one side and I just start peeling back and just like so and this is so satisfying you guys when you really see that that paint and lay has embedded in your uh, paint um, and if at any point it feels like it's not damp enough just spray a little bit more water on it uh, and I just keep on going down both sides and there you have it I love how the paint and lays uh, really transform your piece now keep your paint in lay because this can be used up to three to four times. So um, each time you use them though, it does, um, it's just not as vibrant. It almost has like a distressed look. So it looks really cool. And I just do the exact same thing to the next one, um, to the next birdhouse. And uh, again, missed it, pull the paint and lay back and there you have it. I have a little bit left of this kissing booth. I had recently painted some items with it and I always try to use up any excess paint as well. Uh, because this was there was a lot of creams and uh, light colors on here, I just really wanted a pop of color. So I am adding a little bit of kissing booth around the entire perimeter of the entire birdhouse just to give it a pop of color 
and really make those pinks pop out of the florals on the roof. Next, it's time to assemble all the pieces, and I probably should have, rather than eyeballed it, got out the ruler and really measured it to make sure that it was truly in the center. Uh, I think it was off a bit, but that's okay. So once I figure out or you figure out where you want it, flip it over. I took my brad nailer. I had inch and a half brad nails and I put in three brad nails uh, and it was really sturdy. I then did the exact same thing to the birdhouse. I uh, made sure that the birdhouse was even on the board, flipped it over and put some brad nails in there and then attached that piece to the spindle. Next up, you want to seal your entire piece. And the key is with the paint and lay, you guys, load up your paintbrush with your top coat and with a very, very light hand, apply the top coat. If you don't load up your paintbrush and you have a heavy hand, you're going to smear your paint and lay. I have done this numerous times. I've never smeared it. So again, load up that paintbrush and then with a very light hand, apply the top coat, let it seal, and then you can always go back and add a secondary coat as well. After I get the roof completely top coated, I'm going to seal the rest of the piece because I use DIY paint on the entire piece. Anytime you're using DIY paint, it does need to be sealed with either a top coat or any uh, some type of wax. So whether it be a clear wax, a dark wax, you just need to seal it. Otherwise, DIY paint can be reactivated. I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of something something to the front. So I am going to use the birdsong mold and I am using the 10 minute resin and I am going to cast some little birds and we're going to put those on the front. I am using dark wax and I am going to wax the entire birdhouse and the base. I just felt like it needed something. It was too stark. I, I didn't want to distress it. I just wanted to add a bit of age to it and dark wax definitely adds like that age like it's been outside in the elements for many many years so I am going to go in I'm going to apply a little wax here and there wipe it back and then it's just going to bring out a lot of details of the piece and really make it look like it is an old aged birdhouse video as much as I enjoyed creating it. I had so much fun heading down to Menominee Falls, hanging out with Jen for a few hours. Then I went to the retreat that Jane Vellante put on. I had the most relaxing four days, you guys. And this week I have been on the struggle bus. I, I don't know why. It has been so hard for me to get back into my groove. So I am hoping that this weekend I can really like finally get back into the swing of things. Um, I'm not sure. I just feel very out of it. I felt like I was definitely playing catch up. So that could have something to do with it. But if you guys are enjoying my content and you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button. And then if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And then in the comments, let me know what you guys thought of today's video. Do you want me to do more collabs? I would love to, uh, but only if you guys are liking it. So let me know in the comments 
what you think, and maybe who should I collab with next? All right. Well, you guys have yourselves a great weekend, and we will see you Monday. Bye.